Welcome back to the Fanboy Cantina. In this video, we are going to do our review of Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. In this review, we're first going to go spoiler free and then we'll put up the warning and go into the spoilers. So if you haven't seen it, you can watch to a certain point and then hit pause and come back later. All right, so let's go with the spoiler free. Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness is the 28th movie in the MCU franchise, starring Benedict Cumberbatch, Elizabeth Olsen, Benedict Wong, and Sochi Gomez. I give Marvel credit in attempting something different, this time diving into the horror genre in the hands of director Sam Raimi. In a franchise painfully aware of its interconnectedness, this one kind of flubs it. This is also the first movie to really tie closely to Disney+, Plus, which by itself is a risk. If you haven't seen WandaVision, part of the core premise of the movie will not make much sense. But if you watch WandaVision and its character development, and depending on what you took from it, the premise might make even less sense. This might be the consequences of the challenges that it, this movie faced in getting to production. The original director of the first Doctor Strange movie stepped aside over creative differences. It's known that there were reshoots, though, you know, that's not unusual for any kind of movie. Sam Raimi is quoted as saying he's only seen parts of WandaVision, which may explain some of the connection gaps. And of course, there's reconciling the director's own style with the adherence to the MC MCU franchise style, and then the challenges of doing a production during a global pandemic. But at the end of the day, the core premise is weak. The script is unusually weak with stiff dialogue, big chunks of narrative just spewed in uninteresting camera angles. In some moments, it looks and sounds like a TV show on the WB from the 90s. The multiple MacGuffins serve as useless plot devices that seem like side adventures in a video game, but do very little to advance the story. And after the setup of a multiverse with variants and timelines like in Loki or Spider-Man No Way Home, the multiverse we see here is a bit underwhelming, especially when you stack it against everything everywhere all at once. That movie was significantly more creative in its take on multiverses. There's not much madness in the multiverses here. That said, there are some visually stunning sequences. There's one magic battle in particular that will be music to your senses. If you're a horror fan or a Sam Raimi fan, you'll enjoy the nods to various other franchises or other horror tropes, which brings me to this. This movie will likely be too scary for younger viewers. If you've got little ones, I recommend screening it in advance because some of it may be too scary and nightmarish for them. There's the most gore and violence ever to appear in the MCU, such that I wonder if they deliberately put this movie on the upper edge of the PG-13 rating. I really wish the trailers did not reveal as much as they did. There's a certain scene in the movie that generated a major reaction from the crowd in the theater, but it ends up being just kind of a gratuitous waste. So overall, I felt that this movie was undermined by its own mediocre storytelling. It is visually stunning at times, though not as stunning as the first Doctor Strange movie. I watched it two times, and the second time that I saw it was a little bit better, maybe because of the lower expectations, but I felt like it exposed some of the problems in the story even more. All right, so now we're going to get into the spoiler review. So if you haven't seen the movie, do me a favor, hit the like, hit the subscribe, hit pause, and come back later after you see the film. All right, so last warning, we're about to get into the spoilers right now. I'm really surprised by how much the Multiverse of Madness relies on WandaVision, yet also abandons core parts of it. If someone hasn't seen WandaVision, I don't think the kids make much sense. The setup seems very trite in the movie. It all comes down to Wanda wanting to be with her imaginary kids. That's it. Vision is also inexplicably absent, though kind of, you know, he's 50% of, you know, Wanda Vision. If you watch her review of WandaVision, one of the biggest takeaways from that show was its exploration of grief and truly taking the side character from the Avengers and making her far more interesting. 
Wanda grows to become the Scarlet Witch, but upon realizing what she's doing, she sacrifices Vision and these kids that had been living in her reality. All of that character development is thrown out the window in Multiverse of Madness, reducing her to a villain. Now, there's also a take, no less valid, that she did take over the mines and torture the people of Westview, which should have consequences. And there is that final end credit scene where she is using the Darkhold. So I get that. What Multiverse of Madness does is take a somewhat superficial take on WandaVision and not fully unraveling its implications or carrying forward its themes. Benedict Cumberbatch and Benedict Wong do well in their roles, and I really like the growth of Wong as the Sorcerer Supreme. There's something hinted at in the beginning of the film about the consequences of Doctor Strange's actions and its impact on others, which would have been an interesting thread. Wanda makes reference to him breaking the rules and being the hero, while she does it and becomes a villain, and it doesn't seem fair. I'm guessing that was a component of the original treatment because it's really interesting but it doesn't go anywhere for the rest of the movie or not in the way that could have been more interesting. The script is just weak. The dialogue is stiff. Watching the characters get into so much narrative in the beginning just feels like it was filmed for a TV show. And that might be in part due to Michael Waldron's experience as a TV writer. For all of the promise of a movie called The Multiverse of Madness, the multiverses that uh, we see are just not that interesting. In 818, the main multiverse that chews up a chunk of the movie, the first exposure to the differences that we see is that red means go and pizza is now in the shape of a ball. In Loki, there's a Loki that's an alligator. In Spider-Man No Way Home, there are three different Spider-Men. A multiverse of madness is just Benedict Cumberbatch in a different outfit and different lighting. The Book of Vishanti is a MacGuffin. The Darkhold is a MacGuffin. Wanda somehow destroys the Darkhold across the multiverse and... It's, which doesn't make much sense, but we just accept it because Doctor Strange says that's what happened. Wanda's need to kill America Chavez for her power is explained as just in case the kids get sick. There could have been a more interesting take on Wanda's motivations than just wanting to see her kids, which she knows are not real. America Chavez seems to be an important new character in the MCU, but feels insanely underwritten. I've read how they've taken liberties with the character in the MCU, much to the chagrin of fans that have identified with or seen themselves in the character. The inclusion of her two moms and the pride pin on her jacket are fine, and I give Disney credit for sticking with it despite the pressure from you know, certain countries. However, for these small moments... It feels reduced to just nods. I, I hope that the MCU will include more of her identity in the future. Chavez does have a bit of a hero's journey here, though it's underwritten. You know, Strange's wristwatch has a more complete arc than America Chavez, which is insanely unfortunate. Sidebar. I wonder what other movies uh, have had an arc for a wristwatch. I'm going to say uh, Die Hard has the best arc for a watch, followed by Multiverse of Madness and then Midnight Run. The action scenes are stunning. The opening chase and the attack on New York are well done, and that gave me high hopes for the rest of the movie. The attack on Carmitage felt a little bit like Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, but it's still fun. The battle of the musical notes was really fun, and the formation of Zombie Strange was very creative, unique, and scary. Even though there are moments where I felt like we were walking through horror tropes, like where the limping Wanda is chasing America, uh, Chavez, and Dr. Palmer, and Dr. Strange, I thought they were executed well. And so for those action scenes, I think the movie does quite, quite well. As I said, the trailers gave away too much of the film. I'm guessing it's because they had that John Krasinski reveal that they felt comfortable in teasing Captain Carter, Professor X, and Captain Marvel in the trailer. But really, it could have been all the more powerful by holding back some of that. In the end, they all end up as cannon fodder anyway, right? With the excitement that maybe this was bringing the X-Men into the MCU, or John Krasinski fan-casted as Reed Richards, it all ends up being irrelevant in the multiverse. 
But beyond that reveal, uh, again with the trailers, I was waiting for when is Zombie Strange going to show up? So I was just waiting for what happens at the end of the movie. It's kind of like with Rise of Skywalker where I was wondering when are we going to see that big fleet from the trailer? On the two times that I saw the movie, the biggest crowd reaction was from the Illuminati scene. But all of that energy and excitement is quickly deflated. In the second screening I saw, there was one guy excited about the mid credit scene. And as for the end credits, it was a combination of chuckles and outright groans. Ultimately, I was disappointed by this movie. I thought the storytelling was weak, and for a movie that seemed like it would culminate in so many of the themes of WandaVision, Loki, Spider-Man, No Way Home, this movie superficially takes part of WandaVision, and the characters are just underwritten, the arcs are ignored. I'm a fan of the MCU, so I was going to see this movie anyway. I just wish that it was better than it was. If you're on the fence about seeing this movie and you're conscious of your movie going budget, I think maybe waiting for Top Gun Maverick or Thor Love and Thunder might not be a bad thing. If you're a horror fan, maybe you'll like this movie better than I did. In, in this case though, for me, it wasn't about the horror, it was just a weak story. But we want to hear from you. Post in the comments what do you think of Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please take a moment to like, share, and subscribe. This has been the Fanboy Cantina.